Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm talking today with returning guest, Dr. Hillary Baldwin, Medical Director of the Acne Treatment and Research Center. Thank you so much for returning, uh, Dr. Baldwin. How have you been? I've been fine, thank you, and thanks for having me back. Well, uh, for those of us, uh, our listeners who may not be familiar with you, describe uh, who you are. Uh, briefly, talk about your practice and the patients that you normally see. Okay, doke. Well, uh, I'm a practicing dermatologist, and I see patients in both Brooklyn, New York, and Morristown, New Jersey at the Acne Treatment and Research Center. So I'm basically, at this point in my life, doing all acne or rosacea all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the kind of patients I see from the mildest to the most severe. We're here today to, to talk about some of the uh, the triggers, some of the symptoms, and some of the latest treatment options for rosacea. What exactly is rosacea for those of our uh, listeners who aren't familiar with it? Sure. Well, it's a chronic inflammatory disease of the skin, primarily of the face, primarily at the center of the face. <laughs> and patients manifest with generalized redness, uh, easy flushing and blushing, pimples and pustules, and occasionally uh, eye disease, if eyes feel gritty and are red-rimmed, and occasionally phyma uh, formation, most likely on the nose, but sometimes on the chin and the forehead. That last feature is seen primarily in men. Mm -hmm. So not everybody has all of these manifestations. Uh, most people have uh, a combination with one or more of these uh, features being most prominent. But that's the overall picture. And I think the important uh, uh, word in that whole uh, introduction is the word chronic and inflammatory. This is not an infectious condition. And therefore, according to our current efforts to be good stewards of antibiotics, really doesn't need to be treated with full-dose antibiotics. Mm. So are the, uh, the characteristics that you just described, are those the characteristics that um, differentiate rosacea from other skin conditions such as acne? Yeah, that, and you know, sometimes it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. um, so in your rosacea patients, they're usually, they're more commonly women. Uh, they're more commonly older than your acne, average acne patients. It's usually about 30 to 50 that we start to see it. Ah. And they have most of their involvement in the center of their face with a lot of background redness. And most importantly, I think, is the absence of blackheads. Blackheads are always seen or very, very commonly seen in acne. Mm -hmm. And if you see sort of monomorphic red papules in the center of the face of a slightly older woman, it's more likely to be rosacea than acne. But it's not always that easy to tell. I have a, a limited understanding of dermatology, but I think that pretty much everybody is going to deal with acne at some point in their life. Are these folks that are most susceptible to rosacea, the, the women, are they absolutely going to deal with this at some point, or is it more likely, less likely in some? It's certainly less likely than acne. It's estimated that there are about 50 million acne sufferers and only about 16 million rosacea sufferers in the U.S. So it is very common, uh, but it's not uh, a, a genetic inevitability. You know, if you live long enough, you're going to get it the way, the way it is with acne. I, I agree with you. 85 to 100 percent of people have acne during their earlier years. It's all, only dependent on how, how severe it is. Right? Everybody has a couple of pimples, but some people have a lot. All right. What are some of the, the triggers for rosacea, you know, once um, once you become, I guess, for lack of a better mm -hmm. term, a, a candidate for it? Right. Well, you know, some people say that they have triggers and other people uh, don't seem to have them. The most common triggers are uh, cocoa powder, chili powder, uh, alcohol, especially red wine, hard cheeses, a coffee, tea, hot beverages in general, um, and then all sorts of environmental things like getting annoyed, getting angry, getting excited, uh, being in the sun, uh, being in the cold. All sorts of things can trigger oh, and exercise, of course. People right. say that you know, they exercise and then they stay red for a good 10 minutes afterwards. Um, but the, the, the good news is that um, these triggers can be suppressed uh, with uh, simple of behavioral techniques, mm -hmm. and there's great medication to help with the rest. We don't now, have to suffer in silence anymore. Now, just to be clear, these are triggers, not allergies, right? Some of these things that you mentioned, because Correct. stress is in there, okay? And we're, I guess we're all allergic to stress, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
I sure am. Absolutely. So, um, you know, when it comes to everyone being susceptible to acne at some point in their early lives and, and then, you know, some people being susceptible to rosacea, what are some of the myths and misconceptions about um, rosacea that a lot of us probably walk around in our, with our you know heads wrapped around that are completely wrong? Yes. Well, absolutely. The number one is that that red face, especially in the center of the face and sometimes some broken blood vessels, uh, is due to excessive drinking. Uh, um, and that's simply not a true statement. Um, it, it has absolutely nothing to do with that. What it probably does have to do with is that rosacea is more common in light-skinned individuals. And since the demographics are 30 to 50, it's entirely possible that your light-skinned Northern European folks who have a tendency to ruddiness as they get older are merely uh, fulfilling their genetic destiny. Very briefly, what are some of the, the latest uh, treatment options for rosacea? Well, we have a lot of great things. I was asked 15 years ago to give a talk on what's new in rosacea, and there was nothing to talk about. But in the last 10, 15 years, we've made enormous strides at finding medications which are primarily anti-inflammatory and no longer antibiotic in nature because the problem is that the tetracycline class of antibiotics does a really good job on rosacea. We just don't need the full-strength antibiotic. We can use anti-inflammatory uh, doxycycline. There's a formulation out there that's commercially available called Aratia, which uh, sort of targets the, the papules and the pustules from within, if you would, if you don't mind. Um, mm. It decreases the, inflama the, the inflammatory process. And this, although it is made of doxycycline, it's a very low dose, so it does not have antibiotic, does not promote the development of antibiotic resistance. Okay. So that's our oral FDA-approved treatment. And then we have several topical uh, treatments that are FDA-approved, the most recent of which is ivermectin cream, which goes under the trade name of Sulantra, which is a highly effective cream. It's once a day, uh, very tolerable, and uh, can make patients better really quite fast. I've seen some people getting better, for example, as, as early as two weeks. So mm. rosacea responds much more rapidly than does acne. And then, of course, we also have laser and light treatments to help to repair the background redness um, and some of the, quote, broken blood vessels, unquote. Um, there's also new uh, vasoconstricting topical creams. There's two of them. One goes by the name Rofade and the other by Mervaso. And they both constrict the blood vessels so that you don't have to walk around looking beet red during the day. Now, once you um, have laser surgery, is there any further need for any of these topical or even oral uh, solutions, or is the laser uh, pretty much take care of it? Yeah, well, that's a very good point. The laser is really only for the redness of rosacea, um, and so you still need those medications if you have the pustules and the, and the papules. So you often need both, but you're quite right. Once you've used the laser treatment for a considerable number of treatments, often you don't need to treat the background redness anymore with, uh, with medication. Well, where can our listeners go and learn more? Well, there are lots of places that they can go. They can go to rosaciarelief.com, uh, which can tell you all about uh, rosacea in general and, and how it's treated. Um, and then there are, are, there's the American Acne and Rosacea Society that has a website, as well as the National Rosacea Society. The National Rosacea Society is much more geared towards the patients themselves, but it's a nice place to find handouts um, and ways to discuss uh, this problem with, with patients and to recognize the amount of psychic suffering that these patients undergo having this uh, disorder in the center of their face in the prime of their life. Well, uh, it's been a pleasure uh, talking with you again, Dr. Baldwin. I'm hoping that you'll come back and uh, as uh, things develop with acne treatment and uh, rosacea and other inflammatory skin diseases, I hope you'll come back and uh, give us updates. It would be my pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of the program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast Cast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm.